know that you've had a long week. Most of all, we'd like to ask you to get your pen and pad, and most of all, take your notes. Before we do begin, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to enter into a word of prayer. It is appropriate to invite our Savior into our lives and into our presence, that we may glorify Him and exalt Him on His day, that He sanctified, He blessed, and made holy, that we may open our minds, soul, and hearts to enter into His covenant. Holy Sabbath, everyone. On behalf of the Third and Four Angels Ministries, we also want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your prayers throughout the week, for your donations. Ladies and gentlemen, we are appealing, we are still raising funds for the printers. We need your help, we need your financial support. For those of you that are viewing this evening and will be viewing, we also ask that you may keep this petition in your prayers. Holy Sabbath. Once again, let us enter into a word of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy Sabbath, glory to you in the highest, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. We come before you, Yeshua, to give our petitions, asking for thy love upon us in your grace. That while I am preaching and teaching and giving this study, my mind is directed by you, is our prayer, my prayer, that I may hear the small, still voice directing me. As we enter into the most holy of holies, we ask and plead for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach we pray. And Yahshua's people said, Amen. <clears throat> Our topic this evening is the image of the beast. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Third and Fourth Angels Ministries would like to present a very important key point this evening. We have a new email, 7danielrevelation at gmail.com. Our website hopefully will be up and running this month. We continue to ask for your prayers. And for those of you that are requesting books and the sets of various books, feel free to use the paypal.me forward slash lastdayevents.com. We emphasize, ladies and gentlemen, to subscribe to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to subscribe to the channel that you may send this information up to your emails that you have in your computer. The specific purpose of this message is to evangelize the world with this message. Ladies and gentlemen, this ministry cannot do it without you. This message is not only ours, but yours as well, to assist you and to help you and to guide you into the original messages that were given. In these last days, the Philadelphia message is being preached all over the world. This message, ladies and gentlemen, was rejected many years ago. And in the scriptures and in the Bible, we are told specifically that it would be given once again for the last time. To bring up a people on awareness and with love bring them out of Babylon, calling them out of Babylon. The fallen nominal churches, not former Christian churches that have existed, that are now in a different realm. Our Savior is calling the nominal Adventist churches out of Babylon, out of confusion. He's calling nominal Christian churches out of the state of confusion. Ladies and gentlemen, our brothers and sisters are located in so many different churches all over the world. Everybody's church hopping. They're partying, having fun. But we need to grab the scriptures, brothers and sisters, and to see if these things are so. Our topic tonight is the image of the beast. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a series of prophecy of history. We have included information here to help each one of us understand the basics of prophecy. So as we transition and go into the meat of these subjects and the studies that will be given, we ask for your grace. But most of all, we pray for you who are viewing, and we pray that you will send it out to your emails that you may evangelize in your home and in your part of the world and send it out to various parts of the country and around into other countries. 
As we continue, once again we emphasize to subscribe, notifications, and ring the bell so that you may receive the, receive the studies freely. <coughs> the image of the beast will be discussed this evening. The image of the beast, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 will be reading. Turn with me in your Bibles. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. In reading your hearing, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he as Elohim sitteth in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is God. He is not. This verse, ladies and gentlemen, for many, many centuries has been exposed, revealing to us who this person would be, is, and would go into perdition. It is your friend and supervisor and leader of the ecumenical movement, the Antichrist, Pope Francis I. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know if this is the last Pope. We don't know if this person is going to initiate the final climax of Earth's history. The Scriptures gives us specific information in regards to the final events that will take place quickly. We've had a long stream of history. We have a long stream of prophecy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the final climax. There are many people, millions of them, that want to end this whole issue and go home. These are commandment-keeping people all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. We pray that through this study, as you take your notes, that you may pray that your name may be written in the Book of Life, Book of Remembrance, and that your names be blotted out of the Book of Iniquity and the Book of Remembrance. That when judgment comes to your salvation, Satan has no fault, no sin on you. Can I hear an amen? Because Christ was nailed to that cross. He died for you. He died for us. The image of the beast. <clears throat> I am the Lord, I change not. Matthew chapter 3, verse 6. Creator of heaven and earth. God made seven day Sabbath. Genesis 2, verse 3. That's what the seven stands for, is the seventh day that has been blessed, sanctified, and made holy. However, the children are asking, if God made the Sabbath monument, who made this one? Sunday, the vertebral day of the sun. So the children are asking, who made this one? When the early church, referring to the Hebrew people, departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepted pagan rites and customs, she became corrupted and lost the spirit and power of Elohim. Time and time again, the Hebrews and these Tribes continue to apostatize time and time again as it's occurring today. They kept doing this. However, ladies and gentlemen, the early church departed from its covenant that was given. The kings ruled the Hebrews and kept them in captivity. So how long did the kings rule? Well, let us share this diagram. From the year of 723 B.C., to the year 538 A.D., the kings ruled 1,260 years. These kings ruled and held the Hebrews in captivity. Our second phase, here was initiated an old covenant that was given time after time through these generations of the Hebrew people. And Genesis chapter 15 refers to the old covenant. And Genesis chapter 17 refers to the Old Covenant. So I've given you two references. 
This evening, ladies and gentlemen, we're not discussing the old covenants per se. There was a transition of power to rule, referring to the scepter in Psalms 45, verse 6. This we will read, and I ask that you may turn to your Bibles, and we focus on Psalms chapter 45. Psalms chapter 45. Turn with me to your, in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. Chapter 45, and we will read verse 6. In reading and in your hearing, Thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. Here's the key. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, Elohim, thy Elohim, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of mirth, and alloys, and kesa, out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Therefore, in verse 6, brothers and sisters, as you've noticed, there is a scepter here that was given to Adam and Eve. In Genesis, we are exposed to the writings that Moses wrote, also in the Torah. That scepter is referring to power seed authority that was given to Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve fell from disobeying their father, when disobeying their father, they themselves lost that scepter to rule. Satan ushered that scepter. He ushered it. He has it. Then in the year, <clears throat> the popes began to rule. And of course, the popes ruled the Hebrews and kept them in captivity. They began to rule in the year of 538 A.D. to 1798 A.D. for 1260 years. So here, ladies and gentlemen, the scepter was given to the pope in the year of 538. There is a transition from Adam and Eve all the way down to the popes. They ruled a continent. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is what the devil wants back. And he's using a false entity that is called the Catholic Church. All over the world, it means universal. They will receive the scepter in Psalms 45, verse 6. And they will rule for a short space. This is the seventh they will come together, which was the Catholic denomination and the United States of America. They will form a league for a short space. They will come together and they themselves will be involved in reissuing and exalting the image, the mark of the beast. The United States will speak as a dragon and it has begun. Ladies and gentlemen, there is much transition in prophecy that has brought this climax to its point. For you who do not comprehend these outlines, these studies, we need to go back and study so we can hurry, quickly hurry to bring us to where we're at today, present tense. So that you can have your questions answered through the scriptures. To understand who is this false entity that would arise and rule continents? And finally, at the end of the climax, would rule the whole world as the countries would surrender their sovereignty to Vatican Rome. This occurred, ladies and gentlemen. So in October 31st, 2017, all the denominations surrendered their sovereignty to the Vatican Church, except the Seventh-day Adventist Church. However, it has transitioned to that point. It's done that, but not fully. Therefore, the children are asking, if God made the Sabbath monument, who made this one? Well, we will now go into this transition. In recapping, the kings ruled for 1260 years. The popes ruled for 1260 years. When you add these two numbers together, it gives you 2,520 years, 2520 the longest prophecy in the world. And in the midst of this prophecy, you have the 2,300 year prophecy 
that is to be exalted and taught throughout the world until the second coming. And in this prophecy, you have 1260 years of persecution of the popes keeping the Hebrews in captivity. And they're still in captivity today, to, the, to this day. Now they have compromised with the Catholic Church denomination. Let us continue. <clears throat> in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of hearsay. So this person here, claiming to be Pontifus Maximus, is no other than Pope Francis I. So he carries the staff, as Revelation chapter 13 indicates, he carries the staff, and he has Christ as an image on the staff, crucified. Well, this is incorrect. These are Satan worshippers. Christ is sitting on the right-hand side of the Father in heaven. Can we see some smiles, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Here is the United States State Capitol in Washington, D.C. It is white on the outside, but in the inside, it is filthy. A little history in regards to the Sunday Law that was passed in the United States. For those of you who are Seventh-day Adventists, have been Seventh-day Adventists for 80 years, 50 years, 40 years, 20 years, maybe 2, 3 years, we're going to give a little history in regards to the Sunday Law that was already passed by President Harrison. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. And now that the world is now waiting because they're passing out Sunday Law books that have been prepared by others, Jan Marguson was given this information to print the Sunday Law book by the pastor who had the information. It's not Jan Marguson's book, the Sunday Law book. It belongs to a pastor who actually put the work together and put it into a book and gave it to Jan Markison. And from there, ladies and gentlemen, other ministries have been printing them and ordering them and scattering like the leaves throughout the whole world so that people will comprehend the Sunday Law that would be coming. There are those preaching out there in various locations that 1844, October 22nd, never took place. It's false. It is correct. All you need is the Bible so that you may see it and our Savior can expose it in his writings to his prophets. Now we will begin to share with you the Sunday Law that was passed February 29th. Are you reading in your hearing? As we come to these key points, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we'd like you to take note. Number one, on February 29th, 1892, the United States Supreme Court passed a Sunday Law, May 23rd, 1895, is the reference from A.T. Jones. AMS, one page 163, paragraph 3. So on February 29, 1892, the United States Supreme Court passed the Sunday Law, or Sunday Laws throughout the states. That's why we have boo laws, ladies and gentlemen. So when you were born, you were born into the United States, and so businesses were closed on Sunday. Those are blue laws. They were passed in 1892 by your president, President Harrison. Number two. <clears throat> on July 19, 1892, Congress, forward slash the United States, Congress and the United States passed a Sunday bill, May 23rd, 1895. Your reference is A.T. Jones, AMS, page 163, paragraph 4. Your third reference. On August 5th, this bill was signed by who? by President Harrison and became law May 23rd, 1895, A.T. Jones, AMS, page 163, paragraph 5. So I've given you paragraph 3, paragraph 4, paragraph 5. As it was initiated and it was passed and became a Sunday law, which is a blue law that all businesses should be closed, no business played, on February 29th, 1892, this is what President Harrison did. Now the fullness of a Sunday law is now taking place, which is Laudato Si, brothers and sisters. So when Laudato Si, it transitioned out of that 
through the Congress, employees, senators and representatives, and House representatives, they're the ones that wrote up Climate Action Change Now from Pope Francis I, who is Pontifus Maximus. So what he did is he wrote his encyclical letter, and out of that encyclical letter came out H.R. 9, that's throughout the whole country. The Congress of Cardinals and priests, nuns and others, and representatives are the ones that have spearheaded this information throughout Europe. It's passed the House, but it hasn't passed the Senate. In order for the United States to form an image referring to the National Sunday Law of the Beast, the Beast represents Vatican Rome and Bible prophecy, the religious power must so control the civil power. Now, I'm going to just pause here for this minute, and I want you to write these notes down. The religious power must so control the civil government, so the religious power that's being exposed here, brothers and sisters, is referring to the Protestants in the United States and the Conclave of Cardinals, the Catholic Church. In reading, the religious power must so control the civil power, the civil government, who has power to pass and organize these laws and put them into effect. That the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. This is where we're in the transition now. Therefore, it was apostasy that led the early Hebrew church and Rome to form an alliance to seek the aid of the civil government, and this prepared the way for the development of the papacy, the beast, Vatican Rome. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4, which was our key verse. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Once again, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. There shall come a falling away, and that man of sin be revealed. Who's the man of sin, brothers and sisters? That man of sin that would be revealed is the Pope. We've had various, many popes. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. In the same way will the obvious apostasy in the Protestant churches of today clear the way to prepare for the image of the beast. So how is Protestant churches going to clear the way? Well, a couple of weeks ago, you had a surprise at the mall. You had Elder Jonathan Kahn speak. What Elder Jonathan Kahn was speaking was correlating with the 1884 Great Controversy in the issues that had been brought out. He didn't know it, but it stated in the 1884 Great Controversy. So you had different faiths that gathered together at the mall, and you had a few Jews blowing the shofar. So while they were there preaching at the mall, also Dr. Barry, excuse me, uh, Dr. Ben Carson was also speaking, and others. And Billy Graham's son, Elder Graham, was also speaking. However, Mr. Graham and Vice President Pence were speaking at the Lincoln Memorial, which was right down from the mall. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to a very serious time. And what they're doing throughout this negoti negotiation and pleading for the people's support and realizing what's coming before us is that they want Do President Donald Trump to rule another four years to bring it to the epic of his success. You see, this country, ladies and gentlemen, is in the process of a financial collapse and it's going to turn into a cashless society. There won't be no money used anymore. It's a cashless society. Okay? These issues are right before us. So people that will not have a card in order for them to buy food and pay their bills, their mortgages, their gas, is because they do not receive the mark of the beast. So for those that don't have the mark of the beast, you won't be able to be doing any business. 
If you are employed in various companies, it will be a cashless pay that you receive and your, your funds of your employment will go directly to the bank. All the banks in the country and in the world are already in the process in this transition. All the food, etc., from Walmart and all these food faculties are already in the process. That's why President Mike Pence visited Walmart warehouse and asked them the process of the food that's going on and what's coming in and what locations it's going and how much money is being spent. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what is taking place now is a control of the world's population and goods food supply. Your clothing, your property, your homes, it's not yours. You're going to pay your rent, your mortgage, or you're going to be paying the bills for your home that you're buying. That property is not yours. The government can take it away from you within an hour's notice by military. That's a fact. These bills have already been passed through the presidency of Bill Clinton. Bear in mind what I just said. In another study, we will share, you all, share with you all these bills that affects our food, our water, our transportation, our housing, our clothing, our, our economy. Coronavirus was prepared many, many years ago, and the Vatican Church has been behind it all the time. They're not your friends, the company of the Cardinals. They're your enemy. They've taught their priests. They taught their people, do not accept the Constitution. It's not our law. Declaration of Independence, the same. This is why the Democrats have been infiltrated by all these different views and fighting inside their party. This is why the Republicans have been infiltrated by the Jesuits and the Catholics of political orders in order to confuse the Republicans so there is no order but confusion and chaos to break down this country financially, in its prosperity, and bring in a one world army, a one world order, a one world religion, a one world church. In the same way will the obvious apostasy in the Protestant churches of today clear the way to prepare for the image of the beast. It was Congress that invited Pope Francis I September 24th, 2015, to give his Laudato Si in Congress, exposing and exalting Sunday observance, the Trinity, and the Eucharist. <clears throat> However, during the past decades, the ecumenical efforts of the Protestant churches have increased in the extent that unity for any price, here's the key, unity for any price is being pursued at the expense of biblical truth. However, in October 1999, by signing the joint declaration with the Vatican, the Lutheran World Federation declared the Reformation null and void. What did it say? Null and void. The papacy and ecumenical movement is therefore nothing else than the great spiritual apostasy prophesied by Paul in 2 Thessalonians. Here is your proof. Therefore, when the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine, like the Sabbath and the Sunday, <clears throat> as are held by them in common, influence the state to enforce their decrees, that word decrees means laws, plural, and sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image, which is referring to Laudato Si, of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon those who refuse to cooperate will be the inevitable result. So here ladies and gentlemen, the Religious Liberty Department you have a representation and in the Catholic denomination you have a representation of church and state coming together. Here you have the Roman Catholics signing the document and here you have the Adventist representative signing the document. There's your proof. You have questions? Call your general conference or your conferences. They're going to give you a different dialogue. This is church and state coming together. 
The image to the beast consequently represents apostate Protestantism that seeks the support of the state to enforce their doctrines. Here's the ecumenical movement walking through with representatives. Here's the different leagues of religions signing their documents. Here's the Seventh-day Adventist representation signing the documents in league with the ecumenical movement as prophesied. In Christian service, page 155, pastors would persuade the members within the church to keep the first day of the week. Here is the Antichrist, Pope Francis I, giving worship to a dead statue, which is Satan itself. This is what they're doing. And then they're burning frankincense, incense, that numbs the census. And to your right and my left, now you have Pope Francis I speaking to the youth, speaking to the youth of a new order. Then you have him, how, with his audacity, walking with the conclave of cardinals in the Vatican in regards to New World Order. To your right, to my left, you have the representatives of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Here you got John. Here you got the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And of course, the religious, religious liberty director. And then you have Pope Francis I exalting a one world order of religion. Then you have him doing and using paganism rituals in baptizing a baby that is still spiritually dead. This is spiritualism. This is how they baptize you. Instead of immersing you in the water, in the name of the Father, Son, Spirit of Truth, they want to keep you dead and give you a formal greeting to Satan. Here's Laudato Si in its fullness, brothers and sisters. This is Laudato Si. So you've got Vice President Biden hugging and laughing and praying that this Laudato Si can come together. This is what he wants. He's been wanting, and he's known it. Now, you have the picture. In the middle and the bottom of the picture is the medal given to Pope Paul by the Seventh-day Adventist Church officials. Bert Beach gave this to them because the Vatican Church gave the Seventh-day Adventist General Conference a medallion as well. In other words, the Seventh-day Adventist Church gave one to them. In turn, the Catholic Church gave one to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Here's the Seventh-day Adventist representative signing the declaration in regards to the ecumenical movement involvement. Then you have Pope Francis here, September 24th in 2015, reading La Dato Si of Sunday observance, the Eucharist, and the Trinity. Trinity means you can worship any God you want, naked or clothed, whatever it is. And then, of course, everybody knows this man, Sunday Keeper. And then, of course, everybody knows the family of Ted Wilson and the speakers where he was speaking in Europe. The leopard-like beast. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we'd like to bring to your attention that the mark of the beast is right around the corner, and it's already in the process. It's not been enforced yet. Please learn how to grow your own food. Start making arrangements that you can get together with other brothers and sisters and move into the country deeply and get into the mountains. So when everything begins to take place, brothers and sisters, you have a haven to go to so that the angels may guide you and take care of you. Our Savior wants us to get out of the cities, out of the towns, because they're going to be nuked with sin. It's going to be a very contaminated, nuke, nuked area to live. You won't have no peace. You won't be sleeping because people will be breaking into your home, looking for food, clothing looking for things to steal, to sell. And these are people that were not baptized, didn't keep his commandments. These are Lucifer's agents, these little devils, human beings. They're going to break into your homes. They're going to break into your churches. Only Christ can save us now and protect us. This is why he is calling each and every one of us to repent. And keep his commandments, for they're not burdensome, and to put on his yoke, which are the Ten Commandments. So that the angel, the third angel, may seal you in the book of life. 
So when the death angel comes, he sees the mark on your forehead of Yahweh Elohim. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, blessed be thy holy name. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen.